Mike Bond joined now by a man you all know very well, the former UFC featherweight champion, Max Holloway, moving up to lightweight again to fight Justin Gaethje at UFC 300. We are 12 days out, and Max, the uh, the biggest question here, who's going to get the win first, you or our beloved Toronto Raptors, who have currently lost 13 games in a row? Brother. Brother, how much, how much, how much, how much games Toronto Raptors got in between, in, in between now to, to Saturday? I think four or five. I'm going four, tomorrow four, and they play the Lakers. Thing. And then I think they they play the Lakers tomorrow. And then there's a few more coming up. Let's see. I'll uh, look this up quick. So we're not boring the people, but their remaining games are the Lakers, the Timberwolves, the Bucks, the Wizards, the Pacers, and the Nets. So you'd think they'd have a chance oh, against shit. the Wizards or the Nets. Yeah, the Wizards and the Nets, but bro, I, that's like with the with the with the Nets, it's still hard because they they show up when they show up. The Wizards maybe, but I I don't know, brother. Oh, I would like to say them. Please get a win. Let's not let's not go freaking eighteen and zero or an eighteen. I mean, so. Come on, Raptors. Well, let's let's pull it together. Is, good thing is they can't break the single season losing streak record. There's not enough games left. So just need to do that. But let's get our pick and everything. But anyways, enough of the basketball talk. Uh, how are you doing, man? We're 12 days out. How does this feel right now? I, I'm doing good, bro. I feel good. I feel great. A uh, couple more hard work. A uh, couple more hard workouts left. And then it's just fight week and then weigh ins and then the fun time. Yeah, do the damn thing. Yeah, I know you had mentioned this fight first in November. You kind of just threw it out there like, hey, I know UFC 300 needs fights. Uh, Gaethje, if you're down to do it. Was there any part of you at that time that like knew maybe this opportunity, if you had vocalized it, would be there for you? Or was it 100% like organic in that moment? And then we just ended up there in January with the booking. Uh, I, I didn't, you know, shoot or shoot, brother. Shoot or shoot. There's nothing going on. Um, that I, I thought... You know, with with uh, Gaethje not having a fight at that time, Oliveira was against Islam, right? And, like the whole talk was all over Oliveira versus Islam, or whatever. And then that didn't happen, and then the thing happened with Volk, and Volk was and Volk came out and said he wanted to fight, and we don't know when Islam is coming back. So I just kind of shut it out there, you know, just shut it blank, and hopefully caught win, and now we're here, so that's good. Yeah, and you've been teasing the return to lightweight many times. You said whenever it makes sense, you'll be ready to do it. Uh, we're through a camp. I know you've talked a lot about how different this is from the Poirier fight and stuff. Do you feel like you're a fighter in a different weight class right now? Uh, you know, the hard work is largely done. Does it feel like a different guy or not really? Uh, for, for for sure. For sure. I feel bigger. I feel stronger. Um, uh, I feel faster. Mentally, physically. Physically, I feel good. You know, I mean, you guys are gonna see a difference. You guys are gonna see a difference here in a little bit. Wednesday, you guys gonna, you guys are all gonna see. Even when we get in there with Justin, you guys are gonna see the difference. You know, you know, everybody keep uh, talking about the Poirier fight. I hate, bring, I hate bringing it up, but you know, like I said, we had six weeks to get ready for that. That's barely a fight camp. Uh, that's not even a fight camp. It's kind of crazy, but you know, with this one, we doubled that. You know, we had like twelve or ten weeks, whatever it is, and we we just had time. We had time our time. We had time on our side on this one, and you know. There's a lot of questions that people have been asking and uh, can't wait to uh, drop them answers uh, come April 13th. Yeah, and I'm sure there's some people who are watching this who probably followed the sport back when you fought Dustin and maybe followed it closely. But I, I remember being there cage side covering that fight week and everything. And you were saying all the right things that you were ready and you know you weren't too worried about the size, that stuff. Yeah. Is this only something knowing like now after doing it again, like back then, did you feel like you were doing the right things or were you just kind of saying the right things? Like, do you know what I'm saying? Does it feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. right? No, I, I, I did the right the, oh, No excuses. I ain't going to make no excuses now. Now or never, you know, I, I felt like all the, the time that we had, we, we did the right steps. We did the right things. And I went out there and uh, I felt like I did, I, I did well in the fight. You know, I felt like we got to the first, the first couple rounds is, uh, you know, didn't look too well, but you know, I figured it out and, and we got it going in there, but at the end of the day, we didn't get a hand raised. So, you know, I, like I, I sound like a fucking little sore ass loser, bro. At that day, me. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we could have changed. There's a lot of stuff, blah, blah, blah. We can go on and on about every fight, about every single fight of winning or loss. And I can sit here and break it down and tell you. And no, I felt good, man. You know, with that with that second Dustin Boyer fight, I did the right things. We did the right things with the time that we had. And 
I felt like it was a fun fight. It was a great fight, and we did well. But you know, this fight is just different. You know, this is different. It's five years, five years later to the date, I believe. And um, you guys get to see the difference. You know, you guys get to see the difference. I'm excited that uh, I get to share share the octagon with a future Hall of Famer like uh, in Justin Gaethje. And um, you guys get to see, man. You guys get to see the difference. You know, no more talking. We, we're a little two weeks away, a little under two weeks away, and um, I can't wait to show you guys. Yeah, and it wasn't just a great fight. It was one of the best fights ever. It, it was just a shame they got somewhat overshadowed by the fight of the year happening literally <laughs> right after it with uh, Izzy and Gasol on that night in Atlanta. Absolutely insane. But um, people are seeing, you know, some of your physical transformation on your YouTube channel and everything. Max, I'm curious. I know you've said so many times, like, I don't watch the fights. I don't really follow it. I don't break it down. You're doing that a little more with the YouTube channel and everything. Um, what kind of got you to, I guess, get in the sport a little more as like a observer and sharing your opinion and stuff? I mean, yeah, you know, with the, I stay, I suck at the breakdown, but I'm terrible because I don't watch it too much. Uh, uh, but, but reacting to the fights is fun. You know, watch some fights. Cause like, Sitting down and you seeing some highlights, like when something happened and then you see it posted on, on Instagram or, or Twitter, you're like, oh man, you feel like you missed out. So I was like, yeah, let's do some reactions. Might as well do reactions. They put it up. People love seeing it. People love, lo love my commentary of the fights when I'm saying funny stuff. So, you know, it just, it made sense to do. Yeah, no, that's great stuff. The production quality is amazing. And, you know, it's a throwback to the all maxes, which we had, you know, you're ahead of the game on all that stuff. Right. Um, but what you said on the one that's kind of making the rounds the past couple of days, the most recent one that you're sick and tired of people putting a limit on you. That was a great speech, great quotes that you had. Was there something that you saw or like read or was said to you that kind of sparked that, that speech or wanting to get those comments off? Your uh, yeah. You know, it's just, it's just the BMF and you know, with everything going on with Justin and like, I always just tell, tell people like you only go to your last fight and. Justin being a dangerous guy, his last fight being the knockout, you know, and whatever, and me having the stab getting hit so much and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of people just saying stuff. And then when I was talking about the scale thing, people was like, oh, yeah, Max is like, I saw a couple of people be like, yeah, to a heavyweight call him out, or to Francis Nagano calls him out. I'm like, you guys think I care? Like, <laughs> I don't care after that. The last time I checked, Francis Nagano freaking bleeds blood just like me, brother. His blood is red. You know, it's not green. It's not some type. Of, it looks like an action figure, but even looking like an action figure, sometimes, sometimes, uh, you know, you can get caught with a good one. So at the end of the day, I ain't, I ain't, I, ain't, I wasn't even sweating on that. I just had to tell people because I just wanted to motivate people and just tell people that just because people are putting limits on you doesn't mean you have to put limits on yourself. You know, keep raising. You know, those guys who put limit on yourself had someone put limits on them and they listened. You know, so you don't need to be, you don't need to be those people, you know, keep striving to be great. If you fail, pick up and go again. You know, success is not a success is not on this little launch of just keep going steady. Success is crazy, man. You're going to have ups, you're going to have downs and some downs is going to be real down, but you know, you can always uh, bounce back up. Yeah, I love that. And I know you don't care about 10 pounds. You've been calling out Daniel Cormier for like 10 yeah. years. So it's uh no thing I imagine at this point, right? No, 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 no. Yeah, I've been calling out the man so much he retired. So that, that should tell you <laughs> enough. There you go. Do you know um, if on weigh-in day you have to weigh in at 155? Because for the last fight with Gaethje and Poirier, Gaethje weighed in at 156, and that did not seem yeah, to be I, an issue. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I I don't know. I need to actually. Thanks for reminding me. I gotta go ask my. I gotta go ask my my agent. So we see what happens. Yeah, because I saw that too. The last fight he did weigh in at 56. Yeah, so hopefully you got that extra pound. Um, do you want anyone in particular to wrap the BMF title around you, Max? Because we got The Rock for uh, Jorge Masvidal. Masvidal did it for Gaethje. Who's gonna do it in this fight? Uh, I mean, the only the only correct guy, the only correct answer is Mark Coleman, man. Especially with when he went through it uh, recently with uh with it, with his dog and his dog waking up and his dog waking him up to go save his stuff and he go in there and run for his dog. Guy's a G, bro. That's a real life BMF, so I mean that's the only right answer, man. They used I, I think they used him in that little promo video too, right? With facing off with yeah. DC, right? Yeah, they yeah, did. in that picture, yeah, they did. So maybe that's a hint. Maybe maybe he comes. Would be okay. would be sick if he did it. I, I, it would be an honor to, to get him to do it. 
I love that idea. We're going to uh, get that in the headlines and we're going to make the rounds. Last time I asked Dana to have Masvidal do it. So let's see if we convince him to get Mark Coleman to do oh, it. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. And uh, I want you brought up that promo. I want to ask, what did you think of the image with you and BJ Penn? I'm going to show it on the screen right now. Uh, this part of the promo. That showed you guys <laughs> That's pretty sick. Side. Yeah, that, that was sick. cool. Eh? I thought, I thought, I thought, uh, I thought somebody did it on themselves until I saw the video. So I was like, who the hell is, who the hell is Photoshopping this? It's pretty good. And then I saw the video. I was like, oh, you see, did it. So that's pretty good, man. I like the whole video, bro. I like how they was like making, uh, making like the old champions talk with the new champions now. And like, uh, during the press conferences. So I was like, I, I, I really dig the video. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Homage to, to, to the guys before us. And then. Almost to the guys that's here. So that's amazing. Hundred percent. And just a couple last things. Um, are you genuinely like excited to be part of this event? You missed. You fought on UFC one ninety nine. You missed two hundred. Like, we, who knows if you'll be here for four hundred? Um, like, does this feel like something special that you are truly like excited to be part of an event like this? Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, I've been with the UFC for twenty plus fights. Like you said, I, I missed the two hundred. I missed the two hundred mark. Uh, I I got the gun on top on top of the three hundred. I don't know if I'm gonna be around for the four hundred. So, you know, just how big this weekend, how how much this card means to the company with it being three hundred, and me being here, even the card, man. I don't know. I, I see a lot of people talking about the card. Like this card is crazy stacked. You know what I mean? Like I understand where people was coming from. Like maybe they wanted super fights or whatever it may be, but this card is stacked from top to bottom. You know, twelve, twelve or eleven. I don't know what the number is. Uh former or current champs on the card. It's insane. You know, you got, I don't even know who's opening the card. Somebody crazy is opening the card on the prelims, right? First like, fight of the night is Davis of Figueredo and Cody Garbrandt. That is crazy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like how do you put Davis Figueredo who just like had one of the most craziest runs or uh, some of the best fights at 125 as a champion against a former champion in, in Cody at 35 and they're the first card. I don't know, bro. It's insane. Yeah, it's so a, it's cool. a huge card. I'm, I'm I'm excited to be a part of the card, and you know, it's just history, man. It's just history, and I can't, you know, I, I love being a part of history. Yeah, and you got Charles Oliveira on there. If you can see over this way, that poster yeah. of you, yeah, and, uh, yeah, I saw. Fighting in Saskatoon. You, you two youngins there come a long yes, way sir. right now on the main yes, card, sir. fighting back to back. Yes, Pretty sir. Wild, man. Um, just last thing, Max. Like, how much does this BMF belt mean to you? You've won many, many championship fights, defended it. Like, is this something you're going to hold near and dear to you? Um, is it just like a ticket in your mind to some extremely big fights? How are you view viewing like the actual significance of this belt? I mean, the belt is the belt, you know, the belt is cool. It's whatever, you know, things that come, come with the belt can, can be life changing. So we see what happens, but I'm more excited that I, I, I get to shit our octagon with, uh, with Gaethje, man. It's amazing, man. It's amazing being able to share the octagon with a future Hall of Famer with him and um title, no title, being able to fight him is uh is one of the one of the best things I'm looking forward to. Yeah, man. And I think uh, anyone who's a true <coughs> fan of the sport is absolutely looking to this fight. It's freaking incredible. Like twenty three bonuses or something between you two, all these stats, all this Crazy. history. It's gonna be nuts. And I uh, looking forward to being there in Vegas next week. So we'll chat more there, Max. Really appreciate you doing this and we'll talk again soon, brother. Thank you, brother. Have a good one.